In this video, we're going to look at how to create a ambient occlusion pass with a wireframe using Arnold's renderer inside of Maya 2017. Um, if we wanted to do it in the viewport, we can make sure that we're in hardware uh, 2.0 and we can just turn off the wireframe off there for now or just turn on uh, ambient occlusion inside there and we get, get that look going. If you want to render out those images, just change the renderer to hardware 2.0, come in here and we can turn on screen brace ambient occlusion, which is already turned on. And even if you want uh, the um, wireframe over shaded, we can come down to rendering options and go uh, wire on shaded and textured. And when we render that out, and if we want to render out that image like so, we can come up here and render current frame and it will render out the image. So I've just got it on 25% uh, here. I'll just increase the size here like so. And it gives us a pretty good job. Um, now, in regards to the objects and so forth, if you want to change the wireframe color, you can just come down here and double click on to your display layers or command uh, control A to bring up your your uh, display layers double click on the display layer and give it a particular color and then that will render out with that color it's a bit like so um, so that's a really quick way to get out a, an AO and Y frame but a more advanced way would be to use uh, a more sophisticated renderer um, like uh, Arnold. So making sure that you've got the Arnold plugin installed, Systems and Preferences, Plugin Manager, scroll down to MTOA dot and load the plugin through there. Um, it's different on a PC, it's not uh, dot bundle, um, but it's MTOA. And we'll close that down, so that's loaded. And now we can change uh, to a Arnold renderer. Now, with the Arnold renderer, it's um, got indirect lighting, so light bounces around the scene. Um, and as you can see, the rendering t takes a lot longer to, to render out. So I'll just cancel that render by pressing Escape. And you'll also notice it's all black. Um, it doesn't utilize the default light and um, it's not picking up on those those settings. So we're not going to worry about lighting in, in Arnold in this tutorial, but we are going to do is apply a shader, an ambient occluded, occlusion shader, as well as in a wireframe to see how that works with Arnold. Now, because the rendering times are increased, I'm going to take my test resolution back down to, say, 25%. And I'll just close this off for a second. So inside here, we're going to um, apply a shader. Now I could just go in and go select all and then right click and go assign uh, new material, um, which is a, it's a fine way, it's an easy way to do it. But if we want to retain the information of the different materials we have on our objects, a better way is to use um, the render setup. So to use the render setup, come up to this little clapper pod icon um, and we'll load that up. So how this works is it's a bit like layers where we have to create a new layer and we also have to create a collection for that layer. So we do that like so. Now, what we want to go into that layer um, we need to select, so I'll select uh, both the environment and that sphere, and we come over and we add it to that selection. So the beauty of this is that uh, we can now right click on the collection and create a material override. So the material override is going to apply a texture to everything, um, and when we want to turn this on, we can just go into this layer and activate it. So using the Arnold shaders, um, and what we're after is the AO. Hit 
which is here. There it is at the top. So the ambient occlusion shader is now on this scene. Um, if I render it still though, what we're rendering from is the activated layer, so which is this scene layer at the top, which is uh, basically our default everything um, in there. So if we want to activate our new re render setup layer, we can uh, click on the icon here and now we can see um, that and we see what's a the objects only in that collection and we've created a material override so this is now active. Uh, we can turn that off by just clicking this little sort of stop sign um, or turn that on and isolate different collections within here as well. So let's uh, leave that all on like so, it's all active and now have a look at the AO render. So again, I'll just render from current view and this time it's going to render out the AO with Arnold. All right, so that took 26 seconds as I can see down the bottom there. Um, now let's have a look at the uh, wireframe um, as well. So instead of making a new collection, I can just come up into this collection create a new uh, sh uh, material override and go it, go through and assign this time the AI wireframe. So now that's active. So I'll turn off the other one and we'll have a look at the attributes. So I'll just click on this little icon here, it will take us there. And instead of triangles, we'll turn it into polygons. So now, when I render the same scene, I get the wireframe without the AO. Okay. So now that both of those are working, I'll just go in and set it to the render settings that I want and render them out. Okay, so I've just sped that up, but um, it took 2 minutes and 35 seconds to create that wireframe. Um, so now I'm going to save the wireframe app, and I'll save image, and I'll save color managed image, because I want the sRGB uh, color correction on there. And it's going to save it into my project fold inside images, and I'm going to save it out as a TIFF. And I'll call it wireframe. And save that out. Um, so I haven't worried about the background because um, I sh should be able to get the alpha channel uh, and make a selection through that through um, uh, Photoshop. So now. I'm going to do the AO and this will pr probably take even longer. So I'll go back to my render layers or render setup window. There it is there. And I'll turn off the wireframe. Better, better name it. And this is my AO ambient inclusion. And I'll turn that on now and kick off another render. So yeah, this image finally completed and um, it took uh, eight minutes to render out. Um, and again, I'll save that out, save image as and this time I'll call it AO. And again, making sure it's color managed, like so, AO TIFF, and I'll save that out. Um, just before we move on, there's a couple of things I'd like to show you. So in regards to, let's just bring down the time because we don't want to spend that much time looking at the changes. 
But instead of using the render view in here, uh, I'm going to close that down and bring up the um, Arnold render viewer. So this is like an adaptive renderer. So uh, instant preview renderer, um, uh, which works really well with Arnold. So what we, what we can see is um, these little boxes are called buckets and they're rendering each sort of uh, sample and building the samples up over time. So it starts off and it does it really quickly. So you get a quick impression of uh, what the overall scene and then it just goes through depending on your samples that you've set um, for your renderer. So uh, we'll go in and I'm just going to grab an object because I'm working in the AO occlusion and scroll down to the, the final node, which is this material node, which is the AO occlusion node inside there. But before I do that, I'm just going to turn on this uh, building if I can get it to render. So this is inside an interior. So you might have this issue where you can't see, you know, the renderer. Um, and it's basically uh, because of the roof. Um, but we can still, if we go back to our ambient inclusion, we can still uh, utilize this and by doing things like um, changing the, the fall off of how far the ambient occlusion goes. So I'll take that up to say one. Um, that looks okay. Um, and maybe even like 0.5 or even 0 0.01 and move up from there. Oops. 0 0.05. So that's looking pretty good. The other thing I've noticed is um, that uh, if you have a really big scene, you might get this sort of clipping. Um, so where everything's burnt out, it looks like. So what you need to do is just increase the clipping distance. So you might need to, if it's a really big scene, you might need to go you know, into the thousands. So now let's look at how we combine those two uh, renders together. So I'll just open up Photoshop and so inside Photoshop we'll go and open those two files um, so both on my desktop and they save to the images folder there's the wireframe and there's the AO, the AO. so I'll just grab those two. Now it's really important that uh, you don't move the camera when uh, you do these two renders or else they're obviously not going to line up so I'll grab, grab those two, um, and in the channel box here, you can see that we've got an alpha channel there. So if I want to make the background white in this case, um, what I'd do is load this channel up as a selection. So click on the channel and come down here to load it as a selection, and then go into my actual scene and turn on a layer mask for that. Um, selection. So basically what it does is cuts out um, what was selected and so now we've got a background. So if I wanted to uh, put another layer in here I could quickly go in and just get my paint bucket and change it to be white like so. Okay so for the wireframe I'll take I'll have to do the same thing because of the black will um, come out as well. So I'll grab that layer with the alpha channel I'll load it as a selection and then I'll come into layers and use a layer mask to cut that out. Um, if I want to apply this layer mask, I can right click on the layer mask and go apply layer mask and then it'll do it permanently. Usually we don't need to do that, but in this case, this will be, that's a good demonstration. So I'll just grab uh, that um, by Command A or um, to select all um, and go into my AO layer and I'll put it on top of the AO. Oops, I forgot to copy it. So Command A, Command C to copy and then come into my new layer, Command V to paste. And to at the moment we can't see it. But um, 
if uh, we turn on the layer style, so instead of being normal, we'll turn it on to multiply, then we can see the wireframe over the top of the AO. So doing this process uh, with Arnold is a lot slower, but you get a lot better results. Um, doing it with uh, Hardware 2.0 is super quick, um, but you don't have the, the, the type of finish. So depending on what, you, what you're going for, um, there's two options in regards to AO and, and wireframe. If you want to know more about Hardware 2.0, have a look at my video on how to render out um, hardware wireframe and AO using Hardware 2.0, which where I go into a bit more detail on how to just improve it a little bit as well. I'll put a link down below.